Thank you very much. We are here to bring you the story behind the music you love and to introduce you to the men who make that music at Orchestra Hall. You'll also get to hear an informal and easy to understand discussion of music and its interesting personalities. And what's more, you listening right now have an opportunity to win two main floor tickets to a concert by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And now let's turn to the page in your scrapbook about that interesting instrument, the viola. And we have with us Mr. Robert Coleman, member of the viola section of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, to talk to us and to play on that instrument. Mr. Coleman, I'm sure our listeners would like to have you identify the selection you played to open today's program and perhaps play some more from that composition. Uh, that was uh, an excerpt from the Domestic Symphony of Richard Strauss, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll play more of it. Is um, Strauss a favorite composer of uh, viola players? Well, he uh, he's uh, certainly written some very difficult parts for viola players, and uh, and uh, most orchestral violists uh, spend a great deal of their time practicing the uh, the Strauss uh, parts. Is is it true that uh, Strauss is one of the uh, composers who sort of emancipated the viola from an inferior position and gave it some prominence in the orchestral literature? Well, uh, he was at least partially responsible, but uh, but Wagner, uh, who came before Strauss, uh, was probably the major liberator of the viola. And uh, we could also go back to Berlioz, couldn't we? Because That's true. He certainly did a lot to make you viola players prominent in the orchestral literature. <coughs> Mr. Coleman, since this is the uh, first opportunity we've had to uh, have you on our program, because you just recently joined the orchestra, I think our listeners would... Uh, like to have you tell us something about your background, your training, the symphonic experience you had before uh, coming into the Chicago Symphony last fall. And uh, I'd like to throw in another question. How did you come to take up the bill in the first place? Well, uh, I started, uh, as do almost all violists, on the violin when I was six. And uh, uh, when I was 11, I, uh, I received a scholarship uh, to a music school in New York and uh, uh, and uh, continue to study both there and uh, and outside the music school afterwards. Uh, after the war, I attended the Juilliard School of Music, uh, which I entered as a violinist. But uh, I became very interested in chamber music, <coughs> and uh, the uh, and uh, I saw that there would be uh, less opportunity for me to get into a uh, into a string quartet uh, as a violinist than as a violist, and so I. I uh, made the change for that for that reason, expecting that it would be a temporary change. But uh, I found that I was uh, actually uh, temperamentally, I suppose, better suited to the viola than to the violin, and uh, so I stayed with it after that. Uh, I wonder if you could explain that term that interests me very much, temperamentally more fitted to the viola. What is there about the uh, viola that's different from the violin? In other words, you would deny, say, that the uh, viola is merely a larger violin. Oh, I would definitely deny it. Uh, I, I think that the the uh, actual physical techniques that uh, apply to the violin uh, apply to the viola as well. But uh, uh, but the 
a completely different timbre and the, the different uses to, to which the instrument is put in uh, both an orchestral and uh, solo and chamber music work. Uh, I'm inclined to think uh, do require a, uh, uh, a different approach to, uh, to sound production. Is it a more, uh, would you, uh, without uh, trying to get you into trouble with your uh, fellow symphony players, the violin players, is the viola a more difficult instrument to play than, to master, let's say, than the violin? No, I don't really think it is. It's, uh, uh, it requires certain different problems. The, the instrument is, uh, is larger and the, uh, uh, the finger stretches are perhaps more difficult. But, uh, but for that very reason, uh, fewer large finger stretches are required in most of the literature. So, uh, the problem I don't think really, uh, is any greater for the, uh, for the viola than for the violin. We mentioned uh, earlier in the program the name of Berlioz, and of course he said that uh, one spot that of all the instruments in the uh, orchestra, the viola was the one whose excellent qualities had been longest uh, misappreciated, and he felt, felt of course that the uh, the instrument was a was one of his uh, favors favorites, and he talks about its uh, mournfully passionate accent and the beautiful quality of its uh, tone. And uh, I was wondering if you had a, uh, a composition that would illustrate uh, still further beyond the Strauss uh, the perhaps range, the quality of the different registers of the viola. Yes, I uh, I can play an, an excerpt from the uh, uh, the Schubert sonata called the Arpeggione. Uh, if uh, if I might, I'm, uh, I'd uh, take a moment to explain the origin of uh, that name, the Arpeggione. Uh, a friend of Schubert's. Uh, by the name of Stauffer uh, in Vienna, uh, invented uh, an instrument around the beginning of the uh, 19th century, uh, a six-string guitar-like instrument that uh, was uh, played with a bow, but uh, used frets and was uh, apparently a, a, a hybrid of several different uh, varieties. And uh, Schubert uh, wrote this sonata for the instrument. Uh, unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, the, the instrument became extinct almost immediately, and the uh, the piece survives as a sonata for cello and viola, uh, and uh, and it does, I think, uh, uh, even though not originally intended for the viola, it does give the viola a chance to show certain qualities. I'd like to ask a question about uh, your instrument, um, something about its age. Well, I'm <clears throat> I'm playing a, a modern instrument. Uh, it was, uh, in fact, made uh, a little over three years ago by uh, uh, by Frederick Hainel, a, uh, a violin and viola maker in uh, Connecticut, and uh, <clears throat> I think that it's a uh, it's a very fine very fine instrument uh, instrument as most modern instruments go and uh, uh, it requires some more breaking in of course as all new instruments do but uh, I think that uh, eventually it'll be a, uh, a very mellow rich instrument. Your uh, statement that it needs a little breaking in is interesting to me. I remember once I was touring with the Boston Symphony Orchestra, Dr. Kuzvitsky conductor, we dedicated a new hall, Kleinen's Auditorium in, in Buffalo and he was asked in an interview <clears throat> what he thought of the hall and he said he thought it'd be an excellent hall but fifty years from then it would be a much finer hall because the hall would be broken in and the uh, wooden walls would absorb the beautiful sound of symphony playing and therefore would become more mellow. Is, is that uh, 
something that uh, you had in mind, you know, breaking in a viola? Well, <clears throat> I'm a little suspicious of it as it applies to concert halls, but uh, uh, I, I I really don't know what the uh, the uh, physical theory is behind uh, an instrument breaking in. <clears throat> but uh, I do know that that uh, uh, wh whether whether it's that the the uh, the wood uh, becomes more supple uh, and uh, uh, passes vibrations more easily or what I don't know. But it is true that as an instrument gets older, if it's uh, if it's played on well and uh, continually, it uh, it does uh, the tone does definitely improve. Now, <clears throat> we mentioned some composers who were favorites because they <clears throat> sort of liberated the viola. I understand that there, are, I know that there are quite a few modern composers who are very much interested in uh, in the viola as a symphonic uh, instrument, and uh, one of them is uh, Paul Hindemith. And I was wondering how you viola players feel about him. Well, Paul Hindemith himself is a uh, is a uh, violist of concert caliber and uh, understands the the instrument thoroughly, and. Uh, uh, he he's written uh, concerti and uh, sonatas for the instrument in uh, quite uh, quite some abundance. Uh, I could uh, play an excerpt from uh, from one of Hindemith's unaccompanied sonatas. If you uh, would, please. Thanks ever so much, Mr. Coleman, for this inter interesting demonstration of a very lovely instrument. And now we're happy to send a pair of tickets to a concert by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra to Mrs. R.B. Randall of Chicago for her interesting story about Cesar Sieppi, the handsome young basso of the Metropolitan Opera. It seems that this gentleman, with a charming smile and deep bass voice, is quite sensitive about the way Americans mispronounce his name. It's properly three-syllabled, and he says, with a sigh, I really can never marry because in America my wife would always be called Mrs. Sippy. <laughs> 